Welcome to section 4.1.4. We're going to study or go over today some different ways of finding rules from the other present uh, representations that we work with. Um, so the big questions become, how do I write a rule from both a pattern, a graph, and a table? And how do I make a pattern from a rule? Now in your book, up at the top of the corner of that first page, they give you this little diagram here. Remember, we're talking about shortcuts to get from each representation to the other. So that's going to be our focus. So first, we're going to take a look at problem 26. In problem 26, they asked us to look at some patterns we've used before and some rules. And I'm going to write them down, again, right next to their patterns. Okay. We had y equals 4x plus 2, y equals 4x plus 1, y equals 4x plus 3, and y equals 2x plus 3. Those were all those rules, and here were their different patterns. Where did we see... Well, let, let me go back for a moment. Um, there's some elements that we saw in the pattern um, that directly connected with the rule. For example, I discovered that the, the rate, how many tiles were being added, always appeared on the X. So here they're adding four tiles and they're adding four more. So it's growing by four. Here it was growing by four and so its rule had a growth of four. Here it's growing by four so its rule had a 4 being multiplied by the x. Down at the bottom, this rule only added two tiles each time. So it was um, a growth rate of 2. Remember that these numbers came from the number of tiles in figure 0. So if I look at my patterns and I look at figure 0, figure 0 here had 2, figure 0 here had 1, figure 0 here had 3, and figure 0 here had 3. Now, that all ties in to this kind of table that we're going to have you make. I'm going to suggest that you copy and make one of these on your own. But our rules are in this form, y equals mx plus b. If I look at these rules, I see that they're in a form. Just like if I sign my children up for something, they give me a form that says put the first name here, put the last name here. Here is a number that we will always put something into and here's a place that we will also put numbers into. Now these numbers represented how much they were growing. So for right now we're just going to put that down as growth. And here we're going to put this down as a starting point seems kind of natural to think of the zero figure as the starting place. And so in this one, my growth was four, was growing by four each time, and my start was at figure zero was with two. So here's how we're going to write down from a pattern. From a pattern, this will represent the amount um, being the amount being added or subtracted each time. In other words, from figure to figure. The starting point, or the B number, will represent the number of tiles in figure number zero the number of tiles in figure number zero. Now, we saw that in the pattern. Now let's look at a graph in our book. I'm going to try to put this under here and zoom in on it enough that it maybe will let you see it. Okay? We're going to need two things to be able to write the rule from a graph. Now we're going to connect it with what we know we know that the y-axis is figure number zero. So if I wanted to know how many tiles were in figure zero, 
I would look on the y-axis. So in this one, there's one tile in figure zero. If I want to know how much it's growing, I'm going to go over one figure, or I'm going to go over and up to make a slope or a growth triangle. And that triangle is going to be a ratio or a fraction. If you've worked with slope before, you'll recognize it, but it's basically this one. Basically, the rise over the run, or as I sometimes will tell people, it's the vertical change over the horizontal change. And so I'm going to write a fraction. So if I write that fraction for this graph, it's going to be, let's see, it's going over, so here's the growth triangle, it's going over 1, and let's see, it's going from 1 to 4, so that would be a change of 3. Make sure to use the numbers on the side and not just count the blocks or you might get it wrong. Told you we were going to put the rise over the run, which makes this 3 over 1. So its rate of change is 3 over 1 or 3. So we're ready to write the rule. This was the growth. The growth came from came from the, the slope or growth triangle, which in this case is 3. How many? Um, tiles were there in figure one or where does it cross the y-axis at one? I'm going to put a one in there. So the rule for this graph is y equals 3x plus one. Okay, let's go now and let's put into our chart how we're going to connect it to this form. Okay. Okay, so from a graph, the M value from the graph is comes from our growth triangle. So I'm going to just draw a little growth triangle here to kind of remind you of that value, the amount over and up, written as a fraction, with the amount going on top, that. So this is the ratio of the growth triangle. If you already know how to find slope, go ahead and count it as the slope triangle. And this one, remember it was where the line Cross the y axis. So this would be the number um, the line crosses the y axis on. Okay? It may also start on that number. Now, I'm not sure we're going to have, we're going to go ahead and make the other, um, a part two for this. So there's a part two for today's lesson, and you'll need to do that to see the other two, the other remaining items.